You are tuned into Maths with AD. Today's lesson is Long Division. Right, boys and girls, if you look at my division sum that I have written, 896 divided by 4, can you tell me how many 4s go into 896? All in one go, just like that? No, you can't, right? So to make it easy, we are going to separate this is a three digit number 896 which i need to divide by four i am separating it into three parts okay because it's a three digit number i am separating it into three parts so i'm taking my hundreds digit as my first focus number as you can see on my right hand side i've got the letter f written there f stands for focus number so we're going to focus on one digit at a time all right, so we're going to focus on my hundreds digit first. So that's going to be my first focus number. My second focus number, as you can see, I already brought it down to a second part in the sum. Right, I did say I am separating the three digit number into three parts. Okay, so I'm writing my second focus number below the line to show you that it's going to be separated from the rest of the sum. And my third focus number is brought down to the third part of my sum. Okay, so now what I have done was separate my focus numbers or separate my digits and focus at, on it one at a time. Okay, so now I've got my focus numbers all sorted out. What do I do next? All right, I'm going to follow the three basic steps of divide, multiply and subtract. Why do we divide? Well, it's a division sum. That's why we're dividing. And we know when we are dividing, we are grouping, right? Or we are sharing in groups of four. We are actually counting in fours. Why do we multiply? Well, multiplication is the inverse of division. We always do the inverse of any operation to check to see if our answer to the previous operation was correct okay in this case the inverse of division is multiplication so we're going to multiply to see if our division answers were correct and then lastly we're going to subtract why do we need to subtract well in order to subtract we need to find out how many times can four go into these focus numbers Will it go exactly into these focus numbers or are there going to be any remainders? So when we subtract, we find out whether there are going to be any remainders or not. All right, because four can't go into these numbers exactly so many times. Right, let's get started and then you will understand more about dividing, multiplying and subtracting. Okay, so what did I do first? I first found my focus numbers. How did I find my focus numbers? By separating 896 into three parts. Part 1, part 2, and part 3. Okay, that is why it's called long division. Okay, because it's written in a long way, not in a difficult way. Right, let's get started with the D, all right, the D for divide. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the focus number and we're going to divide it by 4, all right. Or you could say 4 goes into 8. 4 goes into 8 how many times? 4 goes into 8 two times. When I'm counting in 4s, I count in 4s two times until I get 8. You can say 8 divided by 4 is 2 or there are two fours in eight how many fours fit into eight two fours now because two is my division answer it will get written on top of my focus number right we said eight is my first focus number so my division answer is going to be written on the top of eight right after divide we need to multiply so now we're going to take the division answer that we have written and multiply it by 4 and what do we get? We get 8 as an answer. Now a multiplication answer gets written under the focus number. Okay, it must get written under the focus number. Right, this means that 
there are two fours in eight. Four goes into eight exactly two times because when I subtract eight minus eight, I have a remainder of zero. There are no remainders. All right. And as I said, four goes into eight exactly two times. Now, the remainder, as you can see, gets written next to my second focus number. My second focus number is 9, and because my remainder is 0, the focus number remains 9. 0 written next to the 9, the focus number remains 9. Now, 9 is my new focus number. I'm going to do the first thing to it which is divide. 9 divided by 4 is, how many 4s go into 9? Well, when I count in 4s, I count 2 4s. Right. If I count 4 3 times, then I will get the answer 12. I can't accept the answer 12. I only need to divide until 9. I only need to group in fours until nine and not until 12. So I can only make two groups of four out of nine. Right, so now I have said four goes into nine two times. Now we're gonna multiply. We're gonna take this two, which I have written on top of the nine, by the way. Right, right on the top of the nine. Two times four is eight. Multiplication answers go under the focus numbers. Right, and then I'm going to do the next step, which is subtract 9 minus 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. Right, it means that 4 goes into 9 two times, but there's a remainder of 1. So 4 doesn't go exactly into 9. 4 goes into 9 two times, but there is one remainder, one left over in order to make the number 9, because 4 times 2 is 8 and not nine. Now, as you can see, I have written the remainder below, below the line. The remainder is now written next to my third focus number, which is six. Now, what does that mean? It means now six is not a focus number on its own. Six is written next to the one and therefore I cannot write six or say six divided by four on its own. I have to take that remainder together with the six and use it as a new focus number. So I'm going to say 16 divided by four. All right. So just remember when you have a remainder, it changes your focus number completely. All right, so my new focus number is not 6 on its own, it's 16 because of this remainder. 16 divided by 4. How many 4s go into 16? 4 4s go into 16. Right, 4 times 4 is 16. So when I multiply, my multiplication answer goes below the focus number. Right, as you can see, my division answers are all written in red, they are on top of my focus numbers. My division, uh, my multiplication answers are written under each focus number. I subtract the focus number with the multiplication to see if there are any remainders. All right, and that's it. Four goes into 896, 224 times, or you can say 896 divided by four is 224. Okay, because 16 minus 16 is 0, it means there are no remainders. All right, let's move on to example 2. Example 2 now is very similar to example 1, except for now we are dividing by 6 and not by 4 anymore. All right, now remember the first thing to do is find and separate my focus numbers. 924 is a three digit number. I cannot divide 924 by 6 all in one go. So I am going to separate it into three parts, into three focus numbers. 9, which is written in the first part of my sum, the 2, which I bring down to write as the second part of my sum and the four, which is my units number 
to be written as the third part of my sum. So I have separated my focus numbers 9, 2 and 4 into three different parts. So now we have chosen and we have identified our focus numbers. We need to divide these focus numbers by 6. So let's start. 9 divided by 6. How many 6s fit into 9? How many 6s go into 9? The only one 6 can fit into 9. Only one 6. Then I multiply 1, the same one that I've written, multiply it by the 6 to get the answer 6. All right. Now, my division answers are written on the top of the focus number. Multiplication answers are written below the focus number. Okay, so I have divided, I have multiplied. After multiplication comes subtraction. Why do we subtract? We subtract to see where the 6 goes into 9 exactly one time or are there any remainders? Well, 6 goes into 9 one time, but when I subtract and I say 9 minus 6, 9 minus 6 is 3. It means that 6 doesn't go into 9 exactly one time. It means that there is a remainder of 3, 3 left over. Okay, when I'm counting in 6s. Now, the remainder together with my second focus number changes my second focus number totally. Remember, my second focus number was 2. But since it's written next to my remainder, it can't be 2 on its own. My new focus number now becomes 32. And I count now, or I have to say, how many 6s go into 32? Or 32 divided by 6. Now, when I count in 6s, I can count in 6s 5 times. All right. 6 times 5 is not 32. 6 times 5 is 30. It means... It means that 6 doesn't go into 32 exactly 5 times. So now when I subtract, which, is, which comes after multiplication, 32, which is my focus number, minus the 30 that I have written below it, 32 minus 30 is 2. It means that 6 goes into 35 times. There's a remainder of 2. I have 2 leftovers because 6 cannot go into 32 in an exact number of times. All right. So now, what do you see? I see a remainder 2 written next to my third focus number. Now my third focus number changes. It is not 4 on its own. Because of the remainder, remember, I cannot throw the remainder away. I cannot leave out the remainder. I have to include the remainder in my next step. So how are we including the remainder in the next step? Is by changing the focus number from 4 to 24. Now my third focus number is now 24. What do I do with my focus number? I divide it. 24 divided by 6. What is 24 divided by 6? If I count in 6s, I can count in 6s right until 24. How many times? 4 times. All right. I can count in 6s 4 times until 24. So 6 goes into 24 4 times. And 4 times 6 is 24. Right, now this means, boys and girls, that this time, 6 can go into 24 exactly 4 times. 24 is written as a focus number. Your multiplication answer is also 24. And 24 minus 24 is 0. There are no remainders. 6 goes into 24 exactly 4 times. The answer to your sum, 924 divided by 6 is equal to 154. Now, boys and girls, can you see how easy the long this division sum comes when we're doing it the long way? It actually makes it easier because we are separating our answers. All right, now for the third and last example, 
I want you to look carefully. It's a little bit different from the first two examples. Now, if I say I'm going to separate 269 into three parts, I'm going to first ask myself, can five go into two? Can two be divided by five? Can I make a group of five if I only have two? No, right? No, we cannot say five goes into a small number. Five can't go into two. Five can't go into a smaller number. So what I'm going to use as my first focus number, my first focus number is going to be combined with my tens digit. All right, the number next to it, the digit next to it. So the two cannot be written on its own. It cannot be separated because it's too small to be counted as a focus number. It's smaller than my divisor. So I'm going to say 26 is going to be my first focus number, right? We are choosing and separating our focus numbers. So I'm going to write two together with the six to make 26. Remember two written on its own. Five can't go into two. Five can't go into a smaller number. So we need to include the two together with the next digit, which is a six. So 26 becomes my focus number. And we're going to say 26 divided by 5. What is 26 divided by 5? 5. 26 divided by 5 is 5. Now we have divided. Now multiply. 5 times 5 is 25. All right. Remember, division answer gets written on top of the 6 and not the 2. Remember, we said 5 can't go into 2. You can fill in a 0 there if you want just to see where you need to fill in the five, all right? Not necessary, but just remember five can't go into two and the two is taken together with the six. So your division answer gets written on top of the six and not on top of the two, right? And then we multiply five times the five to get the answer 25. Multiplication answer gets written below the focus number. 26 minus 25 is one. So what happens now? The remainder changes the focus number, the second focus number, which is supposed to be 9, into 19. All right. A remainder must be included in the sum. So 19 is our second focus number. Now we have to say 5 goes into 19. Now when I count in 5s, I can count only until 15, and that is 3 times. So 5. Now, 5 goes into 19 3 times, and 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, 19 minus 15 is 4. Now, if I look and see after the 9, there are no more numbers to bring down. I cannot separate any more numbers to bring down next to this remainder 4. So, what do I do with the remainder 4? I have to write it on the top with the rest of my answer as a remainder 4. So my answer to 269 divided by 5 is five is 53 remainder 4. And that is my answer. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed and understood this video. Bye from me.